Welcome to the Nourish Child Podcast, a show about childhood nutrition, feeding kids, and dealing with the ups and downs of growing a healthy child. Here's your host, registered dietitian and childhood nutrition expert, Jill Castle. Before we get started, I want to talk to you about iHeart. iHeart is a next generation baby nutrition company and the first new brand to rewrite the infant formula recipe in decades, offering babies next to breast milk benefits and certified cleanest ingredients, finally in the same bottle. Welcome back to The Nourished Child. I'm Jill Castle, and today we're talking about infant formula. There's been a lot of news and innovation in the infant formula industry from new brands emerging and advances in formulation. My guest today will help us get a handle on everything that's going on. While I acknowledge that breast milk is the ideal nutrition for babies, the fact is some families make a different choice by default or by design. This show is not designed to sway you one way or the other, but to offer up-to-date information and answer some of your questions. My guest today is Dr. Devin Keen. Devin is Chief Medical Officer at ByHeart, a next-generation baby nutrition company dedicated to empowering parents with choices along the pregnancy to toddler feeding experience. With ownership of manufacturing and research and development facilities, ByHeart is the only new, fully integrated, FDA-registered infant formula brand in the U.S., allowing for ground-up product innovation and quality oversight at every step. As a board-certified pediatrician and neonatologist, Devin believes that early nutrition is the foundation for lifelong health. We are aligned on that one for sure, Devin. Uh, Prior to joining By heart, Devin was chief medical officer at Padion Research, the only dedicated pediatric clinical research organization in the United States, where she was a medical monitor on numerous clinical trials. Devin built a research program for the Department of Pediatrics at East Carolina University. After completing her medical training while serving in the U.S. military, Devin earned her medical degree from the Uniformed Services University and completed her pediatric residency and neonatal fellowship training at Walter Reed. Devin, welcome to The Nourished Child. Your background is so impressive, impressive, and I'm so excited to have you here on the show today. Thank you so much, Joe, for having me. I am really looking forward to this conversation and grateful to be here. Well, before, I, I know I just did your bio, but uh, tell us in your words about yourself, what you do, the work you're doing now, how you kind of got down this path and, and where you are today. Sure. So as you mentioned, I am the chief medical chief medical officer at Byheart. And Byheart is a next generation infant nutrition company, really transforming this category by being the first new entrant entrant in decades to build from the ground up. And I have the fortunate job of leading Byheart's innovation, product development, clinical research, and medical education, which is just a really exciting time. And it's been a place that you mentioned, we've really been able to invest a lot of resources to doing differently in this category. And I started my career as a neonatologist, as you mentioned, and a neonatologist is a pediatrician that does additional training to specialize in taking care of premature and very sick infants. And it was early on in my training, I recognized how critical nutrition was for these vulnerable infants and not just in the intensive care unit, you know, when they were very sick, but also in setting that foundation for a lifelong health. And that really, I think, inspired me in so many ways of wanting to contribute to this space and wanting to do clinical research and provide evidence to help other neonatologists, help other pediatricians, help parents in really having trusted information. And that started my career in clinical research. I had the luxury of having wonderful mentors. I was able even to do some research at the NIH as a fellow and really learned so much about clinical design, data analysis, 
FDA regulations, FDA submissions, you know, safety monitoring <laughs> during research. And all of that just really rounded out my expertise in clinical research, both from an academic perspective, but also as industry. And during this journey, I was introduced to the company by heart. And I recognized it was a company committed to advancement of infant nutrition and doing it in a very science forward, dedicated to research way Mm. that created or combined my two loves, right? It combined my love of infant nutrition and it combined my love of clinical research and evidence-based practices. And I was thrilled to join as their chief medical officer. Well, that's such a great story. story. And you have a very big job (laughs) listening to all the different uh, roles that you play at ByHeart. And even as, you know, it occurred to me as you were speaking, uh, you know, being a neonatologist and working with premature infants, I know that um, that was not an area that was my specialty, but my really good friend worked in the in the NICU and she was the specialist. And there's just so much nutrition that that is focused on for that population of children and tons and tons of research in that area. I just even off the top of my head, think about, you know, uh, probiotics for children. And so much of what we know for children has stemmed from the research in preemies. Uh, So I'm sure there are other areas in nutrition research where that premature setting for the infant has, has dictated a lot of the study and the research that we know today. So Parents, you know, uh, have a decision to make, and a lot of times they make this decision well before uh, their baby is born. One of them, uh, which is a big and important decision, and what we'll talk about right now is is what and how they will feed their newborn. So when we think about this, what what do you see as some of the challenges and considerations that families face when they are making this decision? Yeah, I think you point out the exact thing that how to feed is one of the first decisions we make as parents. And sometimes to your point, even during pregnancy, right? So it happens very early on. And this is a moment and a decision that all parents experience. And it's an extremely intimate moment. And it's, I think now parents recognize such an important moment for that foundation that it creates for their child. And um, breast milk is the best nutrition for baby. We agree on that, you know, Mm -hmm. and even being in an infant formula company, I would never say otherwise. But as you said, it's not an option for all parents. And there are many reasons for that. And when parents then find themselves having to select an infant formula for their baby, it can be very overwhelming and confusing. And I know for myself, even (laughs) When I was a parent and at the first time looking at the massive amount of infant formula, suddenly having that pressure is now feeding my own daughter, it became very confusing and overwhelming. And I wasn't sure if she would, you know, need an easy to digest formula or especially in today's landscape, our parents leaning more towards immune support, Mm -hmm. knowing also that organic and wholesome are all important components for babies. I think that probably that's the biggest challenge that parents are facing is really navigating through the options within the infant formula space. And this was a place that by heart really set out to make an impact because they were committed to helping parents feel supported in this moment and feeling like they had real choice in this moment. And this is why one of the things I was drawn to the most about the company, because as a pediatrician and being in that moment with parents so often, parents truly deserve to feel confident when they're yeah. making this decision. And I think that they one of the things that can help them feel confident here is having an option that combines all-in-one benefits, right? So everything and clean ingredients finally in the same bottle. And by heart set out to do that. And we believe in doing so, we're giving parents a real choice in infant formula they can feel good about. 
Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, you really do make a, a good point that even when I look at the infant formula options out there today, I feel like there are twice as many as when I was raising my own children. And uh, I remember as a clinical dietitian working in uh, a pediatric ward, the uh, the responsibility to stay on top of everything that was available. And I remember having a list of at least 20 or 30 infant formulas at the time for, for different uh, scenarios uh, uh, for the baby. And just as a dietitian, that was hard to keep track of. And so I really appreciate that parents out there today who are making this decision, uh, the options are even broader than they were <laughs> 25 years ago. And um, it, it can be super confusing. So let's in it and also an emotional decision, right? Because as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, some parents know right off the bat, they don't, they are not intending to breastfeed that they will go with an infant formula. Others are intending to breastfeed and something changes and they're not able to. And so there's this emotional aspect of making an infant formula choice. So it's not uh, just uh, what's the best one, but it's how can I sort of um, shift my thinking and my emotions around what I thought was going to be the reality, but is now very different. Can you address some of the fears or some of the concerns that parents have about infant formula? Yeah, I, I think you alluded to a lot of them there, Joe, which is great. And I think that you know, breast milk is the gold standard and it is the best nutrition. And I think when parents, you know, even if they're knowingly selecting or their circumstances don't make that even an option to consider, I think there's always this component of guilt with that, at least from my experiences, what I've seen, because, you know, breast milk is a wholesome, natural, but also functional nutrition for their baby. And it's you know, until today or until recently, that's been really quite hard to achieve the combination of those two things in one. And I think, you know, that's really where by heart saw a gap or saw a need for parents in the solution we created. And so we tackled both of these things. And one of the things we recognized in founding the company or in starting on this journey was that infant nutrition is in this really exciting era. And breast milk research is exploding, nutrition science is exploding. And yet, because of a lot of the barriers to entry into this category, it was quite hard to innovate in this space. And mm -hmm. a lot of companies weren't able to do that. And so we set out to build from the ground up so we could do just that and really bring some of this innovative science to babies. The yeah. other thing that was really important to us was clean, right? And trying to get more natural, wholesome ingredients. And we worked very early on with our suppliers and set very high standards as far as what was acceptable, well, not acceptable at all, as far as contaminants and toxins and heavy metals. And we began this work from the onset of our company. So, you know, five, six years ago, well before, you know, sort of some of the newer headlines and the concerns around, you know, infant baby foods. And we set this bar so high for ourselves and our partners that we were the first infant formula to achieve the clean label mm -hmm. project certification. And in fact, achieved their highest level, which is their purity award which tests for over 500 contaminants, toxins, and heavy metals, and we had no levels of detection. So we hope that, you know, by providing this combination, again, of, you know, really advancing science, you know, advancing innovation and new product that can achieve all-in-one benefits as well as clean, we can help start to close that gap between infant formulas and breast milk and alleviate some of these fears and guilt that parents feel when infant formula is the choice for their infant. Yeah, yeah. 
Can you, I just want to circle back um, because you've mentioned it a couple of times that by heart is a building formula from the ground up. What, what do you mean by that exactly? Yeah, I think it's a great question. If you don't mind, I think probably the easiest way to start to explain that is to sort of get into the regulations around infant formula or how you can enter into this space as a new brand um, or even bring a new formula to market for established brands, right? And so I think probably the most important thing to emphasize in this, which I think is reassuring to me as a parent, reassuring to me as a you know clinician, I think should be reassuring to everyone, is that infant formula is the most highly regulated food in the U.S. Mm. And rightfully so, right? It is yeah. sole source nutrition for very vulnerable infants. And so we are, I am extremely grateful for the FDA's regulations in this space. But as I said, it does make barrier to entry and barrier to innovation a long path. And one that if you're truly going to do, you have to sort of start from scratch. So I'll start to explain how that is and why and how Byheart did that. So there are three main places that the FDA has regulations in infant formula. To break it down very simply, it is what's in it, what does it do to baby, and how is it made? And if we dig into each one of those a little deeper, what's in it is their regulations around the levels, so the maximums and minimums that you can have for certain vitamins, minerals, macronutrients, so your proteins, your fats, your carbohydrates. It also has regulations to really truly understand how your formula behaves in babies. So you have to have clinical data or clinical evidence of how your formula impacts safety, Um, impacts growth of babies. And if it's a really novel new formula, they actually request some animal work to be done in advance to make sure your protein helps babies grow appropriately. So there's one additional step if you are really innovating in the the space of macronutrients. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the FDA has regulations around the manufacturing. You have to make it the same way every time. You have to have great quality controls, you know, good process. And so there are, prior to Byheart's entry, there were very few, or there still are very few infant formula registered facilities in the country. And so in coming to market, um, especially as a new brand, your option was to utilize the only third party manufacturing in the country as an infant registered one and to apply for exemption of the clinical trial requirements. So you still have to have clinical trial data that your formulation is safe, but if you don't have an innovative formula, you can leverage older clinical data as long as your infant formula is not substantially different from the research that was done. And this is where that barrier to entry was really happening was that a lot of the research is older research. And and while companies are continually doing research in this space, so I don't want to mitigate that, it's quite hard to really modify the base without going back to a very large FDA registered clinical trial level. And so, yeah. So it sounds like the older research sort of persists or perseverates the formulation that is replicated in formula after formula. Correct. A little bit. Yeah. And there's some newer research, I, you know, of looking at newer ingredients, which, you know, we all are aware of, but a lot of the true innovation in those macronutrients requires going back to this sort of newer FDA clinical trial. Mm-hmm. And when Byheart looked at the path and the options and really worked with leading experts in breast milk research to design our formula, we click, quickly realized that this meant we would have to do our own clinical trial. And to be quite honest, we wanted to. We believe we have a new innovative product and we wanted to be able to speak to those benefits from our own clinical evidence. And so we, once we chose this path, that also meant we had to have an infant formula manufacturing. And so 
We purchased our infant formula manufacturing in Reading, Pennsylvania. We um, designed our manufacturing process so that we have quality controls that meet standards, but also retain the quality and integrity of each of our ingredients. So we mm-hmm. were very thoughtful and we could design our process very unique to ourselves. And then lastly, it meant we had to conduct this clinical trial, as I said. And so we took the FDA regulations as our baseline. And that is your formula against a comparator or a commercially available formula for four months, and you monitor them very closely for growth and safety. And that to us was our baseline. And we decided to also extend out for an additional two months, knowing that, you know, usually infant formula or breast milk is sole source nutrition those first six months. So really benefiting from understanding those final two months of that period, as well as including a breast milk arm, a breast milk group. So we have infants that were solely breastfed so that we could compare to nature's gold standard. Mm. And then lastly, we collected blood and stool samples so that we can start to understand the reasons for some of these clinical outcomes we're seeing. And so this this path is the longer path. It is Mm. definitely the harder path. It requires so many aspects of the regulations to build from the ground up, as we said, right? So we had to have our own manufacturing. We had to create this brand new recipe and then study that recipe in animals and infants. And all of that hard work led to us being the fourth fully integrated infant formula brand in the U.S. And it's something we're very proud of and something that I think gives us this platform for continued innovation. And now a word from our sponsor, ByHeart. ByHeart is a next generation baby nutrition company whose new infant formula offers next to breast milk benefits and cleanest ingredients. Finally, in the same bottle. ByHeart is the only new infant formula brand to own their own manufacturing and control quality at every step. ByHeart is the first new infant formula to rewrite the recipe from scratch with a global team of pediatric nutritionists and breast milk scientists. After all, innovation isn't easy, but babies and their parents deserve a better feeding future. How long did that take, would you say? And what, you know, where are you with the FDA, reg, you know, approval and all of that good stuff? Yeah, so we it took a little over five years. <laughs> wow. Um, and I think that's just by heart's approach, you know, to be very thoughtful at every juncture in the journey and do it right to create this platform, right? This foundation that really we can now leverage as a company for being a dominant player in the infant nutrition space and really having impact and real choice for parents in those first thousand days. Um, We are to market. And so we're very excited that that, you know, we developed a wonderful relationship with the FDA over our journey and our submission process. It's a massive submission, as you can imagine, that goes to the FDA. Um, And our submission process with them was, again, one that's very reassuring of how thorough the FDA is, how parents and, you know, physicians and healthcare providers can trust products that are being sold on the the U.S. market because of the FDA standards. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Are you able to share any of the results of that research in terms I, of product versus breast milk, product for versus other formulas? I most definitely can, and I would love to. Yes. Yeah, I, I would love to hear about that. I think my listeners would too. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So we are... We have concluded a lot of our clinical data analysis. We are still analyzing some of our specimens. So stay tuned, maybe a future podcast. Um, So, but what I can comment on, you know, is in that safety and efficacy, but also some of these really important claims. So when I talk about these all-in-one benefits and how By Heart's formula was designed, 
um, we also set out to clinically prove those outcomes and those benefits. And so there, um, I think probably one of the most exciting outcomes for me is a pediatrician and also knowing this lifelong impact of infant nutrition has to do with what we saw as far as efficacy, or I mean, as efficiency of our protein and our formula. So what we saw was that infants on by heart's formula actually grew more efficiently than infants on the commercial formula. And this concept of energetic efficiency is a really new one. <laughs> it, um, it's a little complex. So I'm going to dig in a little bit on it because I think it's really important. And again, speaks to that idea that what we're seeing with our formula is that we're able to close some of these gaps between infant formula and breast milk today. And so as a you know, quick reminder, we had those three arms in our formula. We had our formula arm, we had a commercially form commercially available formula and breastfed infants. We followed these infants for six months and we had eight time points during this study where we um, measured their anthropometrics. And so that's their weight, their length, their head circumference. And when we analyzed these data at the end, we saw that there was really no difference in weight gain velocities or velocities of length. There was no difference in Z-scores. So Z-scores is how you standardize yeah. these measurements so that you can think about how old the baby was when they were taken, what's the gender of the baby. And then there was no difference in even these raw measures when we compared our formula versus the comparator formula. There were obviously differences between the two formula groups and the breastfed infants, which is well known that breastfed infants just grow differently when it's sole source versus formula. Where we saw the exciting difference was that our infants actually consumed less formula and had less daily protein intake in order to achieve this similar growth. And you can quantify this or start to understand this through this concept of energetic efficiency. And so energetic efficiency is a tool to measure how your macronutrients impact growth. And Flatterman's done some nice work in showing that it's really the quality of these macronutrients that are the drivers of this, and it's not just the quantity. And what we noted was that the energetic efficiency in our infants was significantly better than the comparator formula in the range of 13 to 18%, um, which is similar to numbers when breastfed infants were compared to commercially available infant formula prior to by hearts. And so what this means is that the way our formula matrix is allowing infants to utilize their proteins more efficiently or their macronutrients more efficiently to grow and therefore need less of them. Mm. So, I, yeah, I was going to pause for a second because that, <laughs> I mean, I've read some research around the protein content of infant formula being associated with um, excess weight gain later in life. So how do, can you contextualize that a little bit around that? I would love to. And I okay. think that you're hitting on it, you know, it's it sort of as a neonatologist, right? That is very um, dominant literature is that we're trying to understand these differences in growth between formula fed babies and breastfed babies, not only during that immediate period, but to your point, what that does for long-term impact. And one of the theories is this early protein intake, right? So that mm -hmm. it's having this higher level of protein in infant formula to date may be one of the drivers. And that higher level of protein comes a little bit from the regulations and ensuring that infants meet their amino acid needs on infant formula because there are just each each protein carries different amino acids. And there are things known as essential amino acids, which are amino acids you must get from your diet, right? Your body cannot actually make them. And in order to ensure that infant formulas had enough of these essential, media, uh, essential amino acids, there are regulations around what you have to achieve. And the the profiles of the proteins in breast milk are just different. And so uh, what's been happening is there's a lower protein content in breast milk than infant formula today. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of the hypotheses is that that just sort of content or that quantified number is why we're seeing these differences. But 
what we think we're seeing in our data are that it's actually the quality of the protein and that by having this better quality, babies are able to grow more efficiently. And what we saw when we translated into this sort of concept or number is that our babies actually consumed less protein and achieved a lower sort of protein content consumption a little bit closer to breast milk just by the quality of our protein. And one of the ways I always love to sort of like break this down is in, because it's such a complex topic is when you're building a house, the quality of your material really matters. And if you think even just one piece of that, you know, the wood that goes into building the house, if you have higher quality, stronger wood, you need less of it at the end of the day to build the same house than if you have a lot of pieces that are breaking or that you have to replace or aren't, you know, doing their job and you have to double them up. And so that's exactly the case here by providing our babies with a higher quality protein and some other important macronutrients, we were able to reduce some of this excess protein or overfeeding that has been happening to date. And so we're really excited to continue following that's so super interesting um, and reassuring that you have the actual research and the studies behind to to justify those claims, you know, and further the research in that area as well. Um, one of the things, you know, when we talk about infant formula versus breast milk, a lot of the conversation comes up, um, a lot of a lot of conversation around immunity. Uh, comes up and that breast milk has these immunity properties that formula just cannot mimic. Where um, where does Byheart stand with that? Um, is there, you know, uh, advances or innovation in that area that you can speak to? I'd be happy to. Yes. Yeah. So, right. So I, the four, you know, big outcomes that Byheart was really focused on when we designed our formula had to do with easy digestion, which, you know, we can come back to growth, um, immune support, and then the microbiome development. And I mentioned those last two together because we know they're intimately linked, right? We know Mm -hmm. now that there is a tremendous role that the microbiome plays in sort of immune modulation. And similarly, there's a tremendous role that protein plays in immune modulation. And both in and of itself, protein, you know, has Specific proteins have been shown to impact immune development, but also we know some of their peptides do that, as well as some of their interaction just with the microbiome. So it's an extremely complex system and one that is very important to think about in totality, right? And so it's not just a single driver in breast milk that creates this huge, you know, immune support and immune modulation. And so by heart, again, took all this in consideration. And what we noticed is one of the largest areas between breast milk and infant formula prior to ours was the protein. There's a huge gap in sort of that difference. And so that was a place of focus for us. And we're really excited to be the first U.S. infant formula to have alpha lactalbumin. And alpha lactalbumin is a wonderful protein. It is one of the most abundant proteins in breast milk. And it drives a lot of these immune sort of benefits as well as being sort of a very enriched protein for its nutrients. And it has some of those essential amino acids that I talked about before. And so we have alpha lactobium and we also put it in combination with lactoferrin, which we know is another abundant protein in breast milk, another one of these big drivers of immune support and modulation. But we also focused on the microbiome, right? So we have a prebiotic in our formula to help support, you know, a healthy microbiome that can drive a lot of these immune benefits. And we are the first to have grass-fed organic whole milk in our formula. And these essential fatty acids and their positioning them also all lead to gut health and this immune, you know, microbiome development. And so we we designed our formula not just with one ingredient, but with an entire complex of ingredients that we really think are targeted at providing immune support to baby. And we're just starting to scratch the surface on some of those serum markers and our microbiome data to really provide further evidence 
to support our claims. Wow, that's really, that's super exciting. And I just want to mention to listeners, and I'll include this in the show notes, but I interviewed Dr. Noel Mueller, who is a leading microbiome, infant microbiome researcher here on the podcast. So if those of you listening want to learn more about the infant microbiome, I will direct you to that episode. Um, he has a wealth of knowledge as well, and and perhaps you even know him. But um, it's very <laughs> exciting to see that um, this innovation in infant formula um, from, you know, the nutrient composition to uh, just the, the, the way you built the formula, uh, doing your own research and coming, you know, and, and just this, the whole process is so fascinating. And I think that not only are, um, is by heart sort of ingenious in a lot of, in a lot of these elements, but you're, you're actually forcing the industry to, to level up a little bit, it sounds like, or, or hopefully that will be some of the outcome here. Um, when we think, uh, so, so all of this is so uh, interesting and encouraging, and I'm sure that parents who, who might be listening to this show are, their confidence is already sort of building up in terms of, you know, where uh, the place or the role that infant formula can play in their, in their baby's lives. What are some other ways, you know, that healthcare providers, and I'm thinking about the pediatricians that listen to this show and the pediatric nurses and the dietitians that listen to this show. Uh, how can we as healthcare providers help parents feel more confident about infant formula? Yeah, I think, you know, I, one of the first things I always reminded my parents of was that reassurance of the FDA in, you know, the process that it takes to bring a product to market in the U.S., right? And mm -hmm. so that there is some really great regulation around that. I think the other thing I really love to try and do with my parents was educate them around claims, right? Mm -hmm. So in, you know, as healthcare providers, we ourselves have a gold standard of randomized controlled trial, evidence-based medicine. And so really trying to teach parents and empower parents with what a claim means, how they can dig a little deeper in that and understanding um, what's the evidence that supports that. And, you know, that was a big piece of why we did choose to do our clinical trials. We wanted to be able to really raise that bar and be able to speak to parents that they can trust these claims. And so one of the ones we're really excited about is that um, we are the, have a claim of easy to digestion. And so this is one we think that parents and pediatricians will be very excited about because it is obviously something that has tremendous impact on parents in those early days with formula. And so during our clinical trial, we talked to parents every two weeks or our, our clinical sites talked to parents every two weeks and collected information on spit up and stool consistency and gas. And what we saw was that infants on our formula had less spit ups per day, less modern excessive gas per day and softer stools per day than the comparator formula. And actually closer to breastfed infants. And so again, another one of these examples of how our thoughtful design of the entire matrix is leading to some of the outcomes we designed for. And I think, you know, providing parents with that reassurance of ask for the clinical data or ask for how they're saying immune support. Is it based off of data? Is it based off an ingredient? And really trying to navigate through that space with them is a place that you know, as healthcare providers, we already do innately, right? And so yeah. bring those parents on that journey with you. And, you know, that's another place that By Heart is really committed to empowering parents is through education on some of these things and through some of our platforms, but also educating the healthcare providers too, so that they're speaking the same language when they have these really important conversations together. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. Can you... um speak to European infant formula, because that seems like it's really in the news lately. And uh, 
I have sort of my own thoughts about that, but I'm curious, you know, from a medical standpoint, as a medical director of an infant formula company who has gone through this entire process, what what comments um, can you make about European formula? Sure. So, you know, I think as a parent, as, you know, the chief medical officer of Byheart, we can understand why parents were looking to EU formulas. I think that... Um, their EU formulas have one additional regulation around sort of what macronutrients can be used in your formula. And they're one of the places where corn syrup solids is not an ingredient that can be used. So I think parents were looking to EU formulas as a solution for this clean, wholesome sort of approach. And that's one of the reasons by heart thought it was so important to build our formula with this in mind and thinking about the ingredients and their sources and getting them as you know natural as we possibly could and doing it domestically, right? So giving parents now this option domestically within the FDA regulations, because the regulations are slightly different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So does Byheart have corn syrup solids? No, we do not. In okay. fact, it's a great point. We are really excited that we were able to achieve these easy to digest um, outcomes without corn syrup solids or maltodextrin or even soy oil, which um, has often had to be an option when people were talking about digestive tolerance in this space. So we are thrilled to be able to demonstrate that you can achieve that with lactose as your carbohydrate of choice, just like breast milk. Yeah. Wow. So awesome. So as we sort of wrap up this interview, because this has been so informative and uh, the future of infant formula looks very promising with you and with by heart in the uh, in the conversation. What what are sort of the innovations on the horizon? Where, where do you see infant formula going in the future? This is one of my most favorite topics as the person that leads by Heart's innovation, right? In a place that gets a lot of my attention. And I think it's there, we're just, again, in this really exciting era of still learning about breast milk and still learning about this dynamic fluid that um, has outcomes and differences. And so I think as we learn more, it's going to be incumbent upon us to continue to strive for those outcomes and try to continue to strive for those components. And, you know, in this space of nutrition, I think there's this concept of precision nutrition that's starting to enter in into a lot of facets and areas. And so I always say, you know, if if that can happen in my lifetime for infant formula, I think that is a tremendous achievement that we have been able to incorporate some of that nutrition science down to our most vulnerable infants. Yeah, that's awesome. So Devin, it's been so lovely to have you on the show to talk about the innovation in infant formula and specifically talk about Byheart. Can you um, share with the listeners where they can find in- more information about Byheart, about yourself and the company? Yes, please. Yes, most definitely. I would say our website is our best soy- source. So we are byheart.com. We are also on Instagram and Facebook and have plenty of opportunities to be direct messages in that capacity. I also encourage listeners to check out our parent community platform. So we have a parent community platform called Cluster. And if you just do Google Cluster by heart, you will find it. And that is our place that we are really trying to bring parents together, but also bring experts to parents. So you can find a lot of this information there um, and have access, free access to sleep consultants, nutrition experts, lactation consultants. So um, please come find us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much and good luck with all the evolving research and the launch and uh, all my best wishes to thank you and by heart. Thank you so much, Joe. It's been a pleasure. Hey there, just popping in real quick to ask you if you've heard about the Munch newsletter. It's a weekly paid newsletter I send out to subscribers and it's a little bit of a different piece of content because I answer reader questions in this newsletter. So complicated stuff, stuff that I don't have on the blog and stuff that's not here on the podcast. 
So I have a section on that newsletter called Ask Me Anything, but I also dive into the latest science around child nutrition. So I translate it for you and give you my perspective on that science. And then lastly, in the newsletter, you'll get a section called Get Educated. And I highlight blog posts, podcast episodes, and other people's resources that I think will be beneficial and helpful to you. So if you're getting my newsletter, I do send out a free newsletter every month. But if you want the deep dive, good juicy stuff that comes in my paid newsletter that comes out every week on Mondays, that's $5 a month or $50 for the whole year. You can check it out. I'll provide a link right here for you, but you can also go to thenourishchild.com and find the sign up form for the newsletter. Thanks for listening to the Nourish Child podcast, where the number one goal is to help you grow a nourished child inside and out.